In the last stream, we were working on finally setting up a ore laser base surrounded by mining lasers in our maximum compact machine to begin generating even more ores than we're already getting through our auto sifting system. And the plan is to use those new ores that we're going to get from that mining laser in a mechanism or processing system to either triple, quadruple, or ideally quintuple the number of ingots that we get from every single ore that we process. Now, in the last stream, we did get the mining laser set up but we ran into a little bit of a problem. And that problem, if we head into this compact machine here, is that all of the compact machines by default start in the void biome. If you look on the left, about halfway down, uh, there is biome, Minecraft, colon, the void. And as it turns out, if you put a mining laser into the void biome, in this mod pack, the only ore that you get is iridium. And uh, if we head back out, to our main base here, I actually put Iridium into its own drawer because we have almost a thousand Iridium ore just due to that laser that we put down in the last stream. Thankfully, in the newest update to the mod pack, this has been fixed. The fix doesn't work retroactively. So all of our old compact machines that we already have are still Minecraft Biome the Void. However, what I've done between streams is I've made another compact machine, another maximum compact machine to replace the last one. And if we head in here and press F3, you'll see that this one is now Minecraft Planes. So it's in a Planes biome, not a Void biome. That's on the newest version of the pack. And so now if we head down to this lower level, which I have rebuilt and redesigned a little bit since the last stream, we will see that we are now getting all of the different ores in the game. And so the plan for today's stream is to start taking all of those ores and processing them hopefully in the most efficient manner possible to get as many resources as we possibly can. Now, as you can see, I have spent a bit of time uh, working on this room between streams. For the most part, I've just reset up the same laser drill. We still have the same 24 uh, laser drills feeding the one or laser base. And those laser drills do still have all of the speed and efficiency add-ons. Uh, but all I've done is add some smooth stone and some of these yellow hazard blocks around the edge here, as well as two sets of elevators to take us up to this secondary level. And again, as I mentioned in the last stream, the plan for today's stream is to put all of the ore processing for the ores generated from that laser up on this second floor of the compact machine. So right now we have the ore tripling system that we set up last stream. We've got the energized smelter, which is fed by the enrichment chamber, fed by the crusher, fed by the purification chamber, which gets its oxygen from this electrolytic separator. Now, if we're gonna take that one step further and begin quadrupling all of our ores, we have to put our iron ore into a chemical injection chamber. So we'll go ahead and bookmark this guy. And if we're gonna take it even further than that, and if we're gonna try and quintuple our ores, we have to put first our iron ore into a chemical dissolution chamber, which will turn the iron ore into dirty iron slurry. We then put that iron slurry into a chemical washer, we'll bookmark that, to get clean iron slurry. And then we put that clean iron slurry into a chemical crystallizer, we'll bookmark that, to get these iron crystals, which then go into the previously mentioned chemical injection chamber. And then from there, it's the exact same process. It's purification chamber, crusher, enrichment chamber, and energized smelter. And so ideally, we should be able to make these four machines here, uh, put those on this side, one, two, three, and four, to be symmetrical with these four machines. And then at that point, we will at least have the framework for all quintupling up and running. Now, of course, just getting these four machines is not gonna get us there because things do get a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, for example, in the chemical dissolution chamber, you also need sulfuric acid. Uh, in the chemical injection chamber, you also need hydrogen chloride. And both of those resources also have uh, kind of their own whole side process that needs to be set up in order to get them to work. But uh, initially, if we can get these basic four machines, we will have the base set up for all quintupling ready to go. And some people are asking in the Twitch chat, and I did see a few people in the YouTube comments ask the same thing. Uh, you cannot, unfortunately, uh, put range add-ons into the laser drills. So these guys right here, uh, despite the fact that they do have a working area, you can't put the range add-ons in to make that working area even bigger than it is already. 
Um, but what you can do though, apparently, that I did not know about is apparently you can put, I think it's efficiency upgrades into the all laser biz. And that apparently makes a difference. I'm actually not quite sure what difference it does make, but you can put it in there. And so what we should probably do uh, real quick before we make these uh, four machines here is uh, just quickly see if we can't request another efficiency upgrade. So boom, there we go. That is hopefully now at least somewhat more efficient than it was before. Uh, between streams, I did go ahead and request even more steel casings be crafted. So hopefully we'll have enough to get through today's stream. And right away here, looking at these recipes, uh, one thing that does stand out is that all of these guys, uh, excluding the chemical injection chamber, do require ultimate control circuits and refined obsidian ingots. And so, in fact, I think the very first thing that we're going to have to do is set up yet another uh, metallurgic infuser, which ideally we would then upgrade uh, to a basic infusing factory, which, again, really shouldn't be too difficult. Infusing factory. Boom. And for now, we'll just put this down right about here. Uh, again, we will request, let's request a couple of crafters because I think we might need a few of those today. Uh, this one is going to be for refined obsidian. So if we look at the recipes for the refined obsidian ingot or for the ultimate control circuit, uh, the ultimate control circuit requires atomic alloys and atomic alloys are made in a metallurgic infuser with refined obsidian. Uh, and of course the refined obsidian ingots are also made from refined obsidian dust, which is made in a metallurgic infuser using obsidian dust and diamond. So this should be very doable, actually. Uh, we are going to have to teach our system a couple of recipes, and we're also probably going to want to get our automatic obsidian up and running again. Right now, we're not actively making any obsidian. Um, all of the obsidian that we currently have is from the uh, blast chiller system that we had way back at the beginning of, uh, of the series. For now, we can probably get away with the 1,800 obsidian that we have, but going forward, uh, we are definitely going to want to reset up obsidian production. Uh, otherwise, we are going to eventually, of course, run out of obsidian. Either way, over here, let's take a look. So in order to make refined obsidian ingots, that's also going to require an osmium compressor. Let's bookmark that because I do think we're probably going to want to automate the production of refined obsidian ingots. Uh, before we get to that, though, refined obsidian dust is made in the metallurgic infuser with obsidian dust. So we will encode that, of course, getting rid of the diamond dust because the diamonds are sent automatically. And then obsidian dust is just a regular obsidian in an enrichment chamber. And if I'm not mistaken, we did set up an enrichment chamber in one of the previous streams. We did indeed. There it is. So we'll just drop the obsidian dust in there. And then the refined obsidian dust wants to go in next to the reinforced alloy. And so at that point, Chad, we should be able to request reinforced alloys. Although, much like with the enriched diamond before it, we are going to want to enrich our refined obsidian to make it even more efficient in a metallurgic infuser. And again, much like with the diamonds before it, uh, we can do that fairly easily in the enrichment chamber. One refined obsidian dust equals one enriched obsidian, which can then be used in a metallurgic infuser to get you 80 millibuckets of refined obsidian as opposed to the default 10. And so we will go ahead and teach it that as well. We'll drop that into the old uh, enrichment chamber. And at that point, our crafters should be done. They are. We can drop one of those down on top of this metallurgic infuser, like so. And as per usual, we can rotate that down using the old uh, wrench. Perfect. We are going to want to get yet another exporter onto the back of that. And of course, we're going to want to connect that up to the Xnet system as well. So not too long later, I've added an exporter and an Xnet connector to this uh, metallurgic infuser here and set all of the configs up in the Xnet controller. So all we have to do now is tell the exporter to export enriched obsidian. And just as soon as we get in range of our wireless access point, we can then make a crafting upgrade as well. And uh, we can use that to tell the exporter to auto craft the refined obsidian to fill up the metallurgic infuser whenever it doesn't have the refined obsidian. Now, one thing that both the Twitch chat and the YouTube comments have been uh, railing me for over the course of this series is this thing right here, you'll see that when you hover over the plus in JEI, in the new versions of JEI, so 1.16, uh, there is now an option to control, or it might be refined storage that adds this, not JEI, uh, but there is now an option to control click to request auto crafting. So because our system knows how to make the items and also knows that we don't have them, normally if you shift click to move all the items in, because we don't have the items, nothing gets done. 
However, if you control click, it will then automatically allow you to click start and then schedule a craft for the missing items. So that then you can just go back in and shift click and all the items are there. You can do the exact same thing with the crafting upgrade here. Uh, we're missing two crafting tables and a construction core. Previously, I would go into here, I'd type in crafting table, I'd request a crafting table. I type in construction core, I'd request a construction core. Uh, but if I'm being sensible about it, I can just control left click, start, start and start. And that will request all of the items that we're currently missing be crafted. And then all I have to do is wait a few seconds, shift click and again, and boom, we have the crafting upgrade. Nice. So back over here, we can uh, drop that in and we should instantly hear the mechanism machines kick into gear. And if we check over in here, we can see that a request has been put in for enriched obsidian. And this system now will continue to make enriched obsidian uh, until the metallurgic infuser over here is completely full, which is kind of what we want. You can see here that the machines are fairly slow. Thankfully, we did teach our system how to make both speed and energy upgrades. And I think I will go ahead and request maybe 32 of each of these right out of the gate here, just so we have those ready uh, for when we need them later on in today's stream. So for now, we'll take a few of the speed and energy upgrades and uh, try and make some of these machines here a little bit faster. Eventually, we are going to want to have uh, basically all of these machines full of both speed and energy upgrades. Um, of course, to get there, we are going to have to use a lot more power than what we're currently using. And if you watch the last stream, you'll know that our power situation, um, while not dire at the moment, is definitely in a place where it could start to become dire fairly quickly. We're only producing a maximum of 4,000 redstone flux per tick. Uh, the base as a whole is probably using just over a thousand. I think actually our refined storage system here is using 628 on its own and uh, not including all the machines over here on top of the new mining laser that we built yesterday that's producing a uh, thousand or sorry, consuming a thousand redstone flux per tick. Um, we're definitely probably getting close to the 3000 mark. And especially as we add new machines today, um, it's quite possible that we creep up over the current capacity um, of our reactor. So we do have to bear that in mind. Uh, for now, though, let's head on back over to our pattern grid. And the last few things we need to teach our system here are how to make these refined obsidian ingots. So we'll encode this recipe here. I don't think we need that block of osmium there encode. To use this recipe, we are going to have to get an osmium compressor. Uh, the osmium compressor, thankfully not a particularly difficult recipe to make. Um, however, it does require some more infused alloys and some more advanced control circuits, uh, which I think might be a while because right now the metallurgic infuser over here that would make those alloys um, is currently somewhat backed up. The good news is that we do have a couple of energy upgrades and a few more speed upgrades. And so hopefully we can make this thing a little faster. One other thing that we can do, of course, is we can look at upgrading this even further from a basic infusing factory um, all the way up to an advanced infusing factory and then potentially even an elite and an ultimate infusing factory in the future. For those, we can use an installer. Again, the installer is just as expensive to make. And so I think what I might do real quick is cancel that request for 32 energy upgrades. That should free up these infused alloys here for us to use in the crafting of a new tier of installer. At that point, we should be able to control click to request two more of those advanced circuits and boom, advanced installer and boom. This now has five slots instead of three. Um, it is now using 562 redstone flux per tick, which is pretty hefty. We do have some more energy upgrades. And so quickly filling that up with all eight brings its power usage down to 177 FE per tick so far, in fact, that we could probably go ahead and add one or two more of the energy upgrades, uh, of the speed upgrades again. If we take it all the way to the max here, it does use 1000 FE per tick. And you'll see at this point, the big problem uh, with this is the fact that it's not really able to keep up with the redstone. And at that point, we should definitely look at changing the way that this works. Much like with our diamond and obsidian, we should definitely be enriching our redstone before we export it. Um, so real quick, I'm going to actually get rid of that export for redstone there so that instead we can uh, quickly teach our system how to make the enriched redstone. Stick that as always in the enrichment chamber. And then once again, we can put in the crafting upgrade. And just as soon as we request one enriched redstone, uh, we should be able to put that into the exporter 
and continue to make those red alloy ingots. We are starting to run a little low on redstone, uh, but again, hopefully once we get our mining lasers up and running and actually processing the ores that they get, uh, we should start to get more redstone because redstone is one of the ores that of course we're gonna get from that, uh, that system. Um, it's probably also, real quick, worth making an installer for this uh, enrichment chamber as well, turning that into an enriching factory, and then maybe even going so far as to make the advanced installer as well, just because we are going to be doing a lot of uh, crafting in the basic enriching factory. As we start to request things that all of these machines make, the enrichment chamber is going to have to start making more enriched diamond, uh, more enriched redstone, and more enriched obsidian as well. Uh, so having this be able to do all of those at the same time is almost certainly going to be uh, a worthwhile upgrade. Quick side tangent aside, let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, request some more of these uh, advanced control circuits, and then by extension, uh, also get ourselves an osmium compressor. Beautiful. Again, we'll drop that down for now next to this metallurgy infuser right about here. Drop a crafter on top of this guy. Make sure that points down. And then give this the pattern that we set up earlier for refined obsidian. Now, once again, with this, and things could get a little dicey here, actually, because we do need another exporter on the back of this. Uh, the reason it could get dicey is that we have to break like this glass here, and it's going to look a little janky. Although, the idea is that going forward, we can probably get rid of these machines here. And so going forward, this whole back wall will probably be full of machines. So you won't notice if we have, you know, a bit of broken glass here, at least not from the inside. But uh, here, what we're going to do is we're going to put an exporter down like that. And then we want to make sure that the back here is set to yellow, which is the extra slot. And with the osmium compressor, we have to export osmium to that slot. Otherwise, it's not able to, uh, to do its work. And again, once we have a, another connector on the bottom of the osmium compressor, we should now be able to request these refined obsidian ingots. And if we're going to make the chemical crystallizer, the chemical washer, and the chemical dissolution chamber, we're going to need a total of 12 of these uh, refined obsidian ingots. So we'll start by requesting 12 of those. Hopefully that's going to get done eventually. I imagine for now it's probably going to be fairly slow to get going, but it should get there eventually. We're then also going to need six of these ultimate control circuits, two for each machine as well. And again, at this point, we should, I think, be able to request those fairly easily. Oh, of course, we do have to uh, actually teach this metallurgy infuser here how to use the uh, refined obsidian. Is that the sound that the osmium compressor makes? That is horrible. Mechanism. Wait, <laughs> that's a horrendous sound. But uh, what I was saying, we have to teach our basic infusing factory how to use the refined obsidian that it does already have. And so uh, over here, all we have to do is uh, quickly teach it how to do this. Of course, as always, without that refined obsidian there. Encode. And boom. So now let's try that again. Uh, ultimate control circuit. Six, start and start. That is going to take a minute. Of course, it has to go through and make all of the different tiers of um, all the different tiers of circuit, uh, but that shouldn't be too long. As for the chemical crystallizer, we already have the fluorite, so that is good. The chemical washer requires a basic chemical tank and a basic fluid tank, both of which are fairly easy to do. Then the chemical dissolution chamber requires two more of these basic chemical tanks. And then as for the chemical injection chamber, that requires a purification chamber, which requires an enrichment chamber, which requires two crushers, which require the pulverizers. So uh, let's go and quickly start two crafts worth of that. So two crushers into one enrichment chamber, into one purification chamber, and finally into a chemical injection chamber. And there we go. We get the chemical injection chamber. So now we should be able to make our chemical dissolution chambers and whatnot. Ah, we just set the bottom here to, to output like that. And that should pump the ingots around to the system. It does, beautiful. So chemical dissolution chamber is done. Chemical washer is also done. 
and chemical crystallizer, you guessed it, is done. Beautiful. Okay, so back into our compact machine. And actually, before we go back in, you may have noticed that I do have a network transmitter, network receiver, and network card. What I do want to do, because we are going to be doing a lot of work in that compact machine, um, is I do want to put down another network transmitter over here, uh, quickly throw down a network uh, receiver in here. And again, I'll quickly move that uh, spawn point just so we don't spawn in here. We can then right click on this, head back to the overworld and drop that in here. And not only is that going to allow us to export items uh, and fluids inside the compact machine if we need to, uh, which we probably will, but it's also going to allow us uh, to get another wireless transmitter, which we can then put in here as well, allowing us to access our refined storage system uh, wirelessly while we're in here, if we need any other items or crafts completing. So over on this wall, the chemical injection chamber, I believe is the uh, furthest to the right, we then have the, I believe, chemical dissolution chamber, followed by the chemical washer, followed by the chemical crystallizer. I think that's the order. Let me quickly check that, though, before we progress on any further. The chemical dissolution chamber, into the washer, into the crystallizer, into the injection chamber. Yes, this is correct. And then it goes over to the purification chamber, to the crusher, to the enrichment chamber, to the energized smelter. And so, in theory, chat, this line of machines is how you quintuple ores right? You put your ores in here, and then you get five ingots out on the other side. It's quite the involved setup, but it should work. All we have to do now is actually make it work, right? So as for the purification chamber, we should be able to get the oxygen from the electrolytic separator up into the purification chamber uh, using pressurized tubes. Uh, do we already have any of those? We do. Beautiful. So we can just do something like that. And boom, the oxygen starts to make its way over and the electrolytic separator starts making even more noise. So real quick, let's just uh, mute that as well. Over here, the chemical injection chamber is where things get a little bit more tricky because for this guy, we need hydrogen chloride. And hydrogen chloride is made in a chemical infuser. So we can unbookmark these machines now and start bookmarking things like the chemical infuser. And this requires hydrogen and chlorine. So the good news is that we have hydrogen being made in that same electrolytic separator. Chlorine, though, is made in another electrolytic separator with brine. And as I mentioned in the last stream, brine is made in a thermal evaporation tower. So if we head on back through, actually, because we are going to have to teach our system a few things here, we are going to want to teach our system how to make the thermal evaporation multi-block, because again, this is going to be quite a big block in and of itself. And ideally, we do that with the correct steel and also with the correct copper as well. We probably don't need to teach it how to make the actual controller because we should only need one, uh, maybe at most two of these. So it should just be a case of putting this in here. And the multi-block for this is a hollow 4x4 multi-block. So I'll request a stack of the uh, evaporation blocks. They're really not that expensive. The hardest part um, or the most expensive part, or the part that's going to take the longest, is just the uh, the production of steel, which hopefully isn't going to take too, too long. Um, but once we have that, the next thing we're going to have to figure out is where we want to put it. Essentially, the thermal evaporation controller takes water, which we can create an unlimited amount of using the aqueous accumulators, which is what I've done in here as well, by the way. Uh, over here, we just have another aqueous accumulator below the electrolytic separator feeding it with water. We do have sinks in the pack, and uh, the sink is definitely a more compact way of generating unlimited water. Uh, this, you can basically just pull unlimited water out of it, uh, unlike the aqueous accumulator, which needs to have water either side. The reason why I've gone with the aqueous accumulator is just because you need the aqueous accumulator to make the sink, but the sink also requires three water condensers, all of which require pity machine frames and plastic and gears and buckets of water, and it's just a much more expensive recipe. And given that we don't really need it, I figured it's much easier just to put water either side of an aqueous accumulator. Either way, we are starting to get these thermal evaporation blocks. Uh, let's also go ahead and request the advanced control circuits required to make the thermal evaporation controller here. And then once we have that, we're also going to have to make at least one, and I think actually at least two, thermal evaporation valves. And again, thankfully, uh, that is just more advanced circuits. This time we need two of them, start and start. One and two, beautiful. 
So this is basically everything you need to make the multi-block. Uh, and then really, depending on how big you want to make it, determines how much uh, thermal evaporation block you need. So it might be a little janky, but I think we could build this in here if we wanted to. So as I mentioned before, the basics, it's a four by four multi-block and then it's hollow. So the rest of the layers uh, look like this. And then you can take these quite high. I'm actually not too sure what the uh, the maximum height is. I think it might be like 22 blocks, maybe 18 blocks, something in that range. But you can get these to go uh, quite the way up. Now, normally the way that I build this, I leave four spaces at the top for solar panels. However, in my last pack playthrough, I was told that I didn't, like you don't have to use the solar panels to make this work. So I think what we might be able to do, let me test something here. If I just do this, that does work. So this is the multi-block. I believe this is the bare minimum. Uh, it has to be at least four blocks tall, uh, but the taller you make it, the more brine it can produce. So we're gonna try and make this really as tall as we can within the confines of this uh, compact machine here. So something like this is really as big as we can make it. I guess we could actually, if we wanted to go all the way down to the lower level and have it come all the way up. Uh, I might look at doing that. We'll start with this and we'll see how much brine it produces. If the brine does become a problem, then we can look at making it uh, even taller. For now though, this is working. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put one of our thermal evaporation valves in over here. This is gonna take water in. And then over on this side, we're gonna have another one of our thermal evaporation valves. And this one is going to export the brine. Now, I think we might also need a third evaporation valve if we're not going to use solar panels to power this. And if we're not going to use solar panels to power this, I'm pretty sure that we have to use uh, the resistive heater, this guy right here, uh, which is thankfully significantly cheaper to make than for solar panels, which is why I'm going for this as opposed to uh, the other method. Energy tablet into resistive heater. So the difference here is that the resistive heater does still require power, but it's cheaper than the solar panel. So I'll put that here for now. We'll put the resistive heater onto it like that. Uh, this does require some kind of power to get it to work, but you'll see the heat here is going up because it had some power in from our wireless charging. Uh, we should be able to make more flux points and get power to that fairly soon. Uh, we'll also put another aqueous accumulator down right here and use that to get water up into this, uh, this valve. Okay, so not too long later, we have a flux point. I've also set up an aqueous accumulator using these basic mechanical pipes to pull the water out of there. So now if we do this, and make sure it's connected to the gaming on caffeine network, we should see this start to use some power, 40 FE per tick, not too, too much. Uh, you can set in here how much uh, power you want it to use. I think if I say like 100, it's gonna start using 100 FE per tick, and of course, the more power you give it, the more heat it produces. And so now up here, you can see that we're producing brine at a fairly quick rate as well. Uh, and at the moment, we are, pumping water in faster than it's being used, which is also good. The temperature is rising though, and as it rises, you'll see the production also rises. I'm not quite sure how many millibuckets per tick the aqueous accumulator produces. One thing we did find out in the last stream that I'm not, not actually sure if I mentioned on the YouTube video is that you can put integral components into machines that don't require power from thermal expansion. So like the arboreal extractor here has a resonant integral component in it, and that quadruples the amount of latex that we get from each cycle of the arboreal extractor. Because if we hover over here, the scale factor is four. And so I think if we were to grab another integral component of the resonant variety and drop that into our aqueous accumulator, I would assume that that would start producing four times as much water per cycle. It definitely looks like that is working and is pumping water faster. And uh, there is also then the limiting factor of the mechanical pipe which can only pump so much, you can only pump 4,000 millibuckets per tick. If I'm not mistaken, you can just right click these alloys onto these pipes to upgrade them to the next tier. And so now that's basically a, an advanced mechanical pipe that can move 8,000 millibuckets per tick. And uh, right now you'll see we're not making any brine uh, because all of our brine is currently not being used. So it's quite possible that this system right here is not sufficient, but we won't know really until we start taking this brine out and using it in an actual functioning 
system, right? Until we actually start using it uh, inside of the uh, the chemical injection chamber. Uh, and what I mean by that is that uh, we don't use it in the chemical injection chamber. We use it in the making of chlorine. So yeah, we need to get another electrolytic separator. Once we have that, I guess we can just put this directly onto the thermal evaporation block here. Again, if we're going to break the brine down, we're going to get sodium and chlorine. The chlorine is really all that we need. I'm pretty sure we don't need the sodium for anything. So we'll extract, once again, into the electrolytic separator. Again, we might have to upgrade this, uh, depending on how fast it can pump. But for now, if we do that, the brine is getting put into the electrolytic separator. And we do have enough eyes of ender here to where we should be able to make yet another flux point. And in fact, I'm going to make at least two here because we're also going to need another one, I think, to power that wall over there. So let's do this and let's set that to my network. Beautiful. So that's going to keep going. Over here, we'll set this to dump excess sodium. Uh, the chlorine then needs to go into a chemical infuser, I believe, along with the hydrogen, right? So uh, we need to craft up two basic chemical tanks. And we also need to request some more basic control circuits. That is fine. Uh, but again, if we're going to make the hydrogen chlorine, uh, yeah, this is where we need the chemical infuser with the hydrogen and the chlorine that we are currently making. So for now, we'll just put the chemical infuser right next to the electrolytic separator. That's going to start filling with chlorine. And then we want to put hydrogen in on the other side. And this is where things can get a little dicey because the hydrogen here is a little far away. And we need to get it all the way over uh, into here. Then we need to get the stuff out of the front of this into the chemical injection chamber. So much so that I'm kind of thinking, chat, what I might do in here is I might set up kind of a mini Xnet system. And by mini, I mean the exact same Xnet system that we already have, but specifically for inside the compact machine. That might seem a bit excessive just to move one thing over, uh, but you have to bear in mind that we have to take the hydrogen from here, bring it over to here. We then have to take the hydrogen chloride from here and bring it over to here. Then we have to take the ores out of the laser down there, bring those up to here. All of these machines require power, and we do also have to get the final product out of the energized smelter and back over into our refined storage system. So there is quite a bit of movement that goes on. And so I do think that having a kind of a mini refined storage, uh, sorry, a mini Xnet system in this uh, compact machine is probably going to help us quite a bit. Okay, so I've set up a very basic Xnet system. We have the controller over here. Uh, we have a connector on the controller, and then we have uh, connectors on basically every other machine in the room here. Uh, right now, we do still need to connect up, I guess, uh, right here. And also for symmetry, I guess, right here as well. Um, of course, a lot of these in the floor are going to be covered with facades, so we're not going to see them. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could even put facades over these as well uh, to make it look like the machines are just sat on blocks and not on Xnet cables. Uh, but for now, all we need to do is give the system power. Now, I don't think that you can just do this. Like, I don't think that works, although maybe it does. Let me try. If I do that, actually, let's do... First things first, let's do this so that we can actually give the uh, the Xnet controller power. Now, like I said, I don't think that this works. It looks like that connects there. If I create an energy channel, can I extract energy from that? No, it doesn't work. By the looks of it, you can extract energy directly from mechanism pipes, but I think what's probably going to make more sense uh, is for us to just make a very basic energy cube here. put that down right about there, allow that to receive energy from the top and also to output energy uh, to the left. And then at that point, uh, we can then uh, extract energy from the cube and then basically just insert it to every single one of the machines in this room. So all of these should now be powered. They are, good stuff. Uh, at this point, what we need to do is we need to extract, uh, we need to set up a new gas channel for one. So here we're gonna go mechanism gas create we're then going to extract from one of our electrolytic separators. And here it's definitely going to be worth naming these. So this one is water separator. And over here, we'll just call this one brine separator. And then back over here. So we're going to extract hydrogen from the water separator. It should auto extract hydrogen just because it's on the hydrogen side. And then we need to insert that into the chemical 
infuser. So insert. Now, the trouble here is that right now we have to insert hydrogen into the right hand side of the chemical infuser and then we have to extract hydrogen chloride from the front of the infuser uh, and send it around to the chemical injection chamber. Uh, so normally what you could do is you could put down you know, two connectors and do it like this. However, chat has reminded me that you can also make advanced connectors for mechanism, these uh, ones right here. Uh, they are a little pricey, requiring uh, ender pearls, diamonds, and redstone. However, if you use an advanced connector like that in here, what we can do is uh, if we once again go to the chemical infuser, we can say insert, and then we can also specify up here which side we want it to insert to. So here we can say insert to the right, uh, which in this case is the west. You can see uh, again about here, it says facing west. So we wanna make sure it's set to insert on the west, which it is, nice. Of course, as per usual, I'm going to uh, quickly Mute that sound because it's horrible. Uh, now we need to extract the hydrogen chloride from the front and send that around. Uh, the front here being the north. And we want to send that around to the chemical injection chamber. So we'll do yet another channel of mechanism gas create. Here we're going to extract from the north and then insert that into the chemical injection chamber. So now we should see, look at that, the hydrogen chloride in the chemical injection chamber. And so now if we were to put in a piece of iridium ore, uh, that should process that into four iridium shards. Once again, the sound is horrible. I'm actually quite interested. Like when, once we have all of this up and running, I might go ahead and unmuffle everything just to hear the horrible cacophony of sound that is all of the mechanism machines working because each and every one of these has already been quite something, but combined, they're gonna be madness. We can, of course, also make uh, more gas upgrades and put those uh, into the chemical injection chamber to re uh, reduce the amount of hydrogen chloride required, uh, which of course in turn reduces the amount of hydrogen and chlorine and the amount of brine, the amount of water, it reduces everything and makes it uh, much, much cheaper. So I think the only thing left to do here, I say it only, but it is still uh, quite the setup is the chemical dissolution chamber, because now we need to get sulfuric acid. Yeah, once we have the sulfuric acid, I think we're good. We do also need to get water into the chemical washer, but we can do that via Xnet. And yeah, the chemical crystallizer doesn't require anything. So once we have the sulfuric acid, we are good to go. Now, sulfuric acid is a bit of a pain. To make sulfuric acid, uh, you need to get another chemical infuser with water vapor, and sulfur trioxide. Water vapor, super easy. It's water in a rotary concentrator. So for the third time today, we'll unbookmark and start rebookmarking new machines. The sulfur trioxide is made in yet another chemical infuser, this time with oxygen and sulfur dioxide. Oxygen, of course, we can get from an electrolytic separator. Sulfur dioxide here is made in a chemical oxidizer using sulfur dust. Now the question is, do we have sulfur dust? We do, we have over 2000 sulfur dust. Where are we getting our sulfur dust from? We actually have both kinds of sulfur dust, which makes me think that the pack maybe changed, which one it gave you partway through. Yeah, it looks like I guess previously you'd get the one from thermal expansion, whereas now I guess we get the one from mechanism. Uh, we get it from sifting gravel, with a 10% chance. So we are making it automatically, which is good. Going forward though, it might not be a terrible idea for us to look at getting some sulfur essence from sulfur seeds to get this more quickly. It really depends on how fast we burn through that uh, sulfur dioxide, which in turn uh, really depends on how fast we make all of these machines, right? If we start upgrading every machine to its factory form, uh, its highest tier factory form, and we fill it with speed and energy upgrades, uh, then at that point, we were almost definitely gonna have to get more sulfur, but if we leave everything at its normal speed, it's gonna be a lot slower, uh, but we probably need less sulfur, right? Um, either way, for now, let's see if we can't make this rotary uh, condensentrator. So for the rotary condensentrator, it's actually a fairly easy recipe, basic control circuits, basic fluid tank, basic chemical tank, done. Uh, we then need the chemical oxidizer, which requires another basic chemical tank, along with a personal chest, uh, which is not too bad, um, although we are missing a few items there, like chests and steel, we can request those. We then need two more chemical infusers. So for that, we're going to have to make four more of these tanks, which unfortunately do not stack, but we'll take one, two of those. Uh, hopefully, we should be able to make the personal chest. We can. 
And then from there, maybe the Oxidizer. Yes, we're just missing a dynamic tank, which is four steel and one bucket. So we'll control click to request the steel. And hopefully any second now, once that is done, we can make the dynamic tanks and use those to make our chemical oxidizer. Nice. So here, I think we'll set this up on this side of the room. Uh, we're going to do chemical oxidizer, which might have to be rotated into chemical infuser, into chemical infuser, into rotary condensate, or is that right? I don't think that's right, right? So sulfuric acid is the final line. Uh, oh, the, um, oh, I see the water vapor is for the, the rotary condensate. So, right, so it is kind of right, but at the same time, kind of wrong. I think that's probably fine. We can do something like this, and then we can, uh, we can move the gases with Xnet as opposed to pushing them uh, directly through the system. Uh, we can just do something like that, and we can use these to get the gases to where they need to go using the, uh, the channels in here. Now, I think what we might want to do here is we might want to get one of those uh, chemical tanks, which are basically gas tanks, by the way. These can hold up to uh, 64 buckets worth of gas. The reason I want to get one of these is I think we should put one here next to the uh, electrolytic separator. If we do this, um, that's going to start filling up with oxygen. The reason we want to do that is that I don't really want to have to make a second electrolytic separator to make the oxygen required for the sulfuric acid. I would rather just speed up this one that we already have. So if we put the oxygen in here, we are almost certainly going to have to speed this electrolytic separator up, uh, but we can then just do something like this and make sure that the bottom there is set to extract to make sure that the purification chamber here has oxygen, but that the exit system also has access to the oxygen as well. So what we're going to have to do here is actually twofold. We're going to need an exporter, and this is where that wireless uh, crafting terminal, or that wireless network transmitter and receiver comes into play, because now we can do this, and we can do this, and then we can connect that up. And again, it's going to be somewhat janky, but at this point, what do you expect? You're on the Gaming on Caffeine channel. So now what we can do is we can get our sulfur, and we'll do the mechanism one, because that's the one we're actively getting, and we can export that over here. So that should make its way in. Again, quite the sound there that I'm going to mute for the time being. That's going to turn our sulfur dust into sulfur oxide, sulfur dioxide. That sulfur dioxide is then going to go directly into the chemical infuser. Here, we need to combine that with oxygen. So here, we need to come back over and we need to create a new mechanism gas, create. We want to extract from the gas tank that's holding the oxygen, extract. And we want to insert into the right chemical injection chamber. So this one right here is making uh, sulfur trioxide, I think. Yes, it is making sulfur trioxide. So we want to insert into the sulfur trioxide chemical infuser, like so. So that should be receiving oxygen. We want to make sure it is... Uh, set to receive oxygen from the bottom, like that, input 2 is on the bottom there, so that should hopefully work. Of course, the chat has pointed out, we need to make sure that the uh, right-hand side of the tank here is set to output, or preferably, I guess, input and output, just in case we have to put oxygen in there. Uh, but now that is working, sulfur trioxide is being made, so hopefully, if we go back into here, go to gases, we can change the right side to an output, so now the middle tank is being sent out. And then over here, the sulfur trioxide, actually, we don't want to do that. That's my bad. That's not what we want to do at all. Uh, please stop. What's that to none for now? Uh, this doesn't actually want to be, yeah, we've done this incorrectly. Let me get, <laughs> let me get rid of that. We don't want the sulfur trioxide in here. We want water in here to make water vapor. Uh, we can, unfortunately, if you break and replace this machine, you're still not going to get, like, it's not going to empty it. Uh, what we can do though, is we can get the gauge dropper here and we can use that to pull out some of these uh some of these liquids i don't know if i can like put them back in nope that's not how that works however i can put it in over here right yes beautiful so we just need to change this mode i think to deconcentrating and then turn it back on that should turn the liquid sulfur trioxide back into the gaseous sulfur trioxide and once all that is done while it's waiting by the way we can turn the sound off again 
there we go. Uh, but in here, we can then do this and then put that back in over here, which is where we actually want it to be. And so now we can actually look at getting water into this rotary condensator. Um, before we do that, before we can do that, uh, we do first need to get an actual connector onto one of these aqueous accumulators. So like right there, like that. At that point, we can set up a new channel and we'll do channel eight here. We'll do fluid, create, and we want to extract from the aqueous accumulator, create, extract, and we want to insert into the rotary condensator, insert. So that should be receiving water, it is. Uh, we want it set to this mode here, decondensitrating. By default, it's set to condensitrating, which is not what you want. You want it in the decondensitrating mode. So you just click toggle operation in the top left. And then from there, we need to set the gas output to the right and make sure the auto eject is on. And so now that should get sent around to here. Uh, we wanna make sure that the left is set to the input two, like that. And then we go water vapor. Uh, finally, we need to make sure the bottom is set to input one, like that. And we need to make sure that uh, over here, this has its bottom set to output blue, because then we can come over and once again, create yet another gas channel, create. We're gonna extract from the sulfur trioxide chemical infuser, and we're gonna insert into this guy, which I will call sulfuric acid. So we want to extract here and insert here. And we've done it. Chat, we are making sulfuric acid. Um, again, we're probably gonna wanna replace this actually with an advanced connector because now we need to extract that sulfuric acid and send it around to the chemical dissolution chamber. So let's quickly make another advanced connector. Let's replace this guy like that. Name this one sulfuric acid over here. Make sure sulfuric acid is getting power. Insert and uh, make sure it is receiving the gases it needs. Insert uh, and then make sure that it is on a new channel mechanism. Guess create. We're going to extract from sulfuric acid. Create extract. We're going to extract from the front, which in this case is once again I believe the west. Uh, yep, by default the front there is set to extract, and then we're going to insert that all the way around into the chemical dissolution chamber, insert. And so this should be receiving sulfuric acid. And so finally, Chant, if we take some of our plethora of iridium ore and we place it into the chemical dissolution chamber, that should get processed into dirty iridium slurry. That then gets sent over into the chemical washer. Here, we need to tap into channel eight. And uh, if we can find the chemical washer on this list. We can set that to insert on water as well. That's hopefully going to start cleaning that dirty iridium slurry into clean iridium slurry at an incredibly slow pace. Like a, at a painfully slow pace and moving that over into the chemical crystallizer. That chemical crystallizer, once it gets 200 millibuckets of clean iridium slurry. Do we have any upgrades that we can use here? We do, beautiful. Let's take those and those. Uh, let's also uh, start requesting. I'm gonna request like a stack of each of these. That's gonna take a while to come through, but I think it's definitely gonna be worth it. Start and start. Uh, so I'll fill this guy up with energy and speed upgrades. That is now using almost 2000 FE per tick, which is maybe a bit much. Let's take a few of those out, I guess, and, uh, and slow it down just a tad. It's still using a lot of power, uh, but for now, the iridium slurry is being crystallized into iridium crystals. From there, we need to set up, I think, an item channel here on the very last channel. Item, create. We're gonna extract from the chemical injection chamber and insert into the purification chamber. So chemical injection chamber is here. Create and extract uh, into the purification chamber. Insert. So that should receive the final product. We do want to make sure that the bottom there is set to input. And we also want to make sure that the chemical crystallizer is set to auto eject on. So that's working. The iridium crystal is being injected with hydrogen chloride, of course, from our brine that's being electrolytically separated. 
into hydrogen and chlorine. The iridium shard should then make its way over, so long as the bottom here is set to output, which it is. That's going to send the iridium shard over to the purification chamber. The purification chamber is going to purify this iridium shard with oxygen. And that oxygen is going to, and that iridium shard is then going to make its way over into the crusher in the form of an iridium clump. That iridium clump is going to get crushed down and sent over into the enrichment chamber here in the form of dirty iridium dust. And then that dirty iridium dust is going to make its way over into the energized smelter in the form of presumably regular iridium dust. And finally, chat, we have a system in place that is going to quintuple this ore. So we put one piece of iridium into the dissolution chamber and we should get five iridium ingots out of the back end of this machine. Now, don't get me wrong, it's an incredibly loud process. In fact, if we do uh, this, we can probably make it even louder. So it sounds horrendous, which is, we knew that from the get-go. We knew it was going to sound horrible, but it works. And as you can see, we are getting iridium ingots. We got five from that initial iridium ore, and the next process is going through as well. Now, of course, the keen-eyed amongst you will notice that this process is in incredibly slow like it's really really slow and if we wanted to start taking um, all of the ores that we're getting down here uh, that we are getting quite quickly actually you'll see an ore uh, get replenished here fairly quickly um we're producing the ores here much much faster than they're being used elsewhere now of course not all of these ores are going to go into the ore quadrupling oh uh, sorry into the ore quintupling system uh, for example redstone ore just needs to go straight through an enrichment chamber to get 12 redstone dust, and that's it. That's done, right? The same is true for diamonds, lapis, emeralds. Uh, I imagine the same is kind of true for, like, rubies and sapphires as well, um, although I've not looked into it. Uh, it's only really things like iron, copper, tin, osmium, etc., iridium, that have to go through this uh, ore quintupling system. But if we're going to start pushing everything through the ore quintupling system at a significant speed, we're going to have to increase our power generation because if we head on back through into here i imagine at this point in time we're probably at a point where like the reactor is on all of the time and we might it looks like we're maybe just holding steady like the reactor is always on it's producing the 3.88 uh, oh, sorry 3.77 thousand fe per tick and the power is being instantly pulled out and basically instantly used. It looks like it is going up ever so slightly. I assume that's because right now uh, the iridium that we put in has now been used. So if we check back in here, uh, like these machines are no longer doing anything because the iridium has made its way through. Uh, but when we have everything online, we are at, if not above, the current power capacity of our base. And so I think in the next stream chat, we're going to want to come back and we're going to want to start to look at producing even more power than what we are currently producing. There are a few ways we could do that. Uh, the easiest way, and the way that we might do initially just to kind of curb the power usage, is we could just upgrade our current reactor from a basic reactor to an advanced reactor uh, using advanced casing, uh, you know, advanced controllers, all that kind of stuff, um, and maybe make it a bit bigger than it currently is. We definitely do have the room for it inside of that compact machine. But I think, chat, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with the setup that we have in here. This is Mechanism's or quintupling system. It's quite the involved setup. We have managed, though, to condense it basically entirely into one compact machine here, so into one 13 by 13 area. And even then, the uh, space is not very efficiently used. Going forward, as we start to speed things up, we might have to increase the size of this thermal evaporation tower. Uh, we can do that by, you know, having it just extend down to the lower level. It's going to look even jankier than it does right now, but it is going to work. Um, everything else in here, though, should be basically good to go. Um, of course, as we start to increase the uh, speed of the electrolytic separators and all of the other machines, um, it's quite possible that we end up using, you know, over 10,000 redstone flux per tick easily, uh, if not more, right, to really make all of these machines much, much faster. Um, but check, for now, I think that's probably about where we're going to wrap things up for today. Uh, we did, I think, complete a couple of quests today. We did, apparently nine, uh, to get the nine C-books, just through uh, a couple of quest completions. Uh, oh, of course, we've got the Aren't You Glad. Apparently, the chemical injection chamber requires a quest that we've not done. Oh, of course. So there are a few quests here that we kind of have completed, but we haven't technically completed them because we've never, hold, uh, never held an elite control circuit. Um, one thing that people did recommend that I think is probably a good idea is to get a few more of these requesters and have basically all of 
the mechanism circuits on demand, right? So if we get like four uh, requesters and put one down for each of the control circuits here, we can make sure that we always have, you know, let's say 16 of each control circuit in the system at any given time uh, so that we don't have to keep requesting them manually every single time we have to craft something. So we'll take these five requesters and just like our other requesters, we can drop those in over here. Let's do uh, one, two, three, four, and I'll put like one here as well. We're not gonna use that one just yet, uh, but then in uh, these, we can just do circuit and let's say 16. We'll do the same for the advanced circuit, 16, and the elite circuit, 16. And I guess we'll do the same, we'll, we'll, we'll do like eight. With, we'll do four with the uh, ultimate circuit. I don't know if we're going to need that many of them. Of course, if we find ourselves needing more or we, we find ourselves crafting these at any point, uh, we can always come back and up these numbers so that we have even more in reserve. But for now, I think that should be fine. We should see yeah, a bunch of those being requested and uh, we should hopefully have all of those ready to go as when we need them. We are now getting dangerously low on redstone, but hopefully uh, between streams, uh, we'll get even more from our, sifting, uh, our sifting system. And next time what we'll do is we'll come back. We will look at generating more power as soon as we start getting more power, what we'll then do is we'll look at hooking up the uh, laser down here to this setup, because right now, of course, we're not actually processing any ores, despite the fact that we have the quintupling system. I think that's for the best, because I think if we actually did start to process the ores, then we would be using too much power. I think our whole system would shut down. So next time we'll come back, we'll work on getting more redstone flux. Once we have more power, we'll then start moving uh, everything from that, uh, from that laser base up and into the dissolution chamber. My plan for that, by the way, is basically just to put a uh, an Xnet connector on the bottom of the uh, the laser base. I don't know if we can quite reach that from where we are. Oh, we definitely can. We try to put it right about there, and then we'll just connect that up to our pre-existing Xnet system, and then uh, we can use that, of course, to move the ores that we want from that ore base into here, uh, and then the ores that we don't want in here, like diamond or redstone or lapis or etc., uh, we can send straight over to an enrichment chamber. Maybe we put that over here somewhere, and then we can have all of the final products maybe collected here and sent back around into the refined storage system. Uh, but for now, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.